Hey pals, it's Al Pal. So with the new DLC out for Doom Eternal, I thought it would be a good time for us to cover another arena. But first, if you like this content, feel free, feel free to subscribe and tell me what has been your favorite game to play this year down below. I'd like to know. Today we are taking a look at UAC Atlantica, and we'll go into more detail in a moment. But first, I want to take a minute to discuss the new format moving forward for these arena analyses. First, I'm going to provide as much info as I can regarding the arena and what tools you can use to make things easier for you. Then we'll see if these are things that I actually utilize in my attempts, because I typically record my attempts before I put this stuff together, so we'll just see how well I do. Now, without further ado, let's see what arena on UAC Atlantica I'm referring to. The arena in question, um, if you're not familiar, you come down from here. This is where you spawn usually. Uh, if you die or if you fail to make the jump here. But, um, what we're going to do here is just kind of go over what uh, repositioning tools we have, what are some good positions to take, what are some bad positions. Um, usually you're not staying in one place too long, so um, they're not really places you should be hanging out for a long time, but if you need a place to breathe, those are what we're going to go over. Anyhow, first things first, we have some jump pads. There's one. Here's our second jump pad. Uh, we have a portal here. There's a monkey bar and there's the second monkey bar. And if we take this portal, it takes us to the other side. There's the first monkey bar and there's our first jump pad for reference. Now, the reason why I like doing this is because if we can understand what options we have in an arena, in addition to understanding what we have to fight and just being prepared for that, um, we're going to have an easier time because we know where we can go to, you know, for easy escape options, good repositioning tools, or if you just like to, uh, you know, kind of just mess around on those monkey bars. It's just a good idea to know where that kind of stuff is. Now, as far as a, as positional choices, this upper level is probably the best. And I will show you why here. Uh, so first of all, up here we have this cover these panels or walls and it's kind of on the first and second levels here there's even some down um, down here but you probably won't be spending a lot of time down there unless you're just cutting through after picking off some uh, an isolated target or something but this upper level is nice these provide great cover um, cacodemons they have a hard time getting over those so if you're up here when they spawn in you, have an, uh, you could have a good way to get them. But the main reason is you really have to pay attention to two directions. You probably won't be going back down this way. Probably come up over here, hang out for a minute, kind of breathe. And then if it gets, starts to get wild again, you have some escape options. You got the jump pads right there. There's a monkey bar. Also, if you're getting pincered, you know, they're coming in from both sides, just climb the walls take your monkey bars and you're on the other side now the problem with these panels especially on that side since it covers so much of area you don't really have a good line of sight so this side over here gives you that line of sight while also providing you with some cover options as well as being able to bounce around here um, as well as taking the monkey bar uh, wherever you fit, see is fit now, these are just like your good mobility tools, repositioning. You can also use your meat hook, but there are some areas that I'm going to show you now that aren't exactly ideal for meat hook maneuverability, and they just really don't have a lot of options for uh, repositioning in general. So this is the lowest level. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is where you spawn. Um, this place can get crowded if you want to just cut through to get to the jump pad. It's fine. Usually, if I'm coming down here, it's because there's an isolated target or I'm escaping something from up there and I want to come around and take this up. I don't want to spend a lot of time down here because there's a ceiling and if I want to use the meat hook to jump and get some air to get to one of these higher levels, um, I run the risk of hitting my head on this, which kind of just you know negates the purpose and then your meat hook's on cooldown. Even though it's short, it's kind of problematic. Um, other than that, you know... You're obviously not going to be spending a lot of time in these areas. These are just kind of areas that you can take to kind of escape damage, uh, avoid line of sight, 
just breathe. Maybe you can pick off an isolated target. We'll see some of that in my runs here in a moment. Um, but this is a this is a fun arena, and that's kind of like part of the basis for deciding what to do for an arena analysis. Is it fun? Is it challenging? Um, if it meets, the, that's really the two uh, criteria that it has to meet for me to want to do a video about it. So, and this has it. The verticality is fun. Uh, you have a lot of options. Kind of juke out demons. You know, come down here and pop up over that kind of thing. So yeah, this is uh, what we're going to cover. We're going to see how well I follow some of these things that I laid out here in this because I do record, um, I do capture my attempts at doing an arena prior to putting some information together. And really the only way to go over this arena um, like the way I am now without having to kill demons is to revisit it after I've beaten it. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it then. So now that we know which arena we are analyzing, let's break down the enemies you will be facing and how best to handle them. So on the screen here I put up each wave. I uh, gathered there's about five. Uh, so the first wave is three Arachnotrons and we have Hell Knights and Prowlers and we have Pain Elemental and two Cacodemons, a Baron and some Carcasses. And then finally a Tyrant and two Arachnotrons. And then of course there's some fodder and some of that fodder is notable we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get to general strategy um but other than that there isn't really much to say about this arena other than that it is pretty standard for an arena in the post game dlc uh, one thing i will note though and i may be a little bit off on this but it seems as though uh the next wave spawns in after you've killed a couple of heavy demons um, and so this kind of has a compounded effect in which you're making progress to clear the arena, but you're still dealing with the same amount of challenging demons. Um, it's pretty constant, actually. And in relation to that, one of those waves, the Hell Knight and Prowlers, that's the one you got to watch out for. Um, these Prowlers, when paired with those close-range pressure demons, like the Hell Knight and the Baron, uh, they can be problematic. And if you're like me, uh, when you're dealing with these... Uh, these rush down demons, uh, you might tend to back up a little bit and deal with them. Maybe you're trying to get the lock on burst so that you could take out those Hell Knights, or maybe you're just trying to take them out with the Super Shotgun and the Ballista. Either way, you're running backwards, and that's not really ideal because Prowlers are very, uh, very good at flanking, and so you you may be backing up, and then they'll pop up behind you, and the on higher difficulties with the higher with the max damage and the max aggression uh, they can do a lot of damage in a short period of time uh, so it's just something to think about uh, when you get to that point in the arena just remember you know I need to take out these prowlers at some point they're gonna be problematic or if you can if you're quick enough you can take out those rush down demons and then the prowlers um, oftentimes you can almost forget about them but it's just something to think about um, as far as like mods and what you can use in this, uh, a lot of that is player preference, so I'm not going to detail that too much. But what I will say is that there are a ton of shielded enemies in this arena, so I would recommend using the Heat Blast just because you can charge it up and use it more often, and so it's just going to provide a lot of value in that aspect. Um, everything else is, you know, again, it's up to you. Uh, you could do it with the standard, what everybody thinks are the best mods, like the Sticky Bomb and the Precision Bolt, Arbalist, those are all fine, whatever you want to use for this. Um, same with runes. I did this rune with the default runes for the DLC, which are, none of them are ones that I used except for Bloodfield, but that's what I used. Um, let's go over the general strategy and some tips uh, before we look at my first attempt here. So, first of all, stick to the upper levels. They provide cover and have more options as far as repositioning. Uh, make good use of the jump pads, portals, and monkey bars. Uh, they're, they're really good to help you get from point to point and allow you to reposition and kind of analyze your situation. Um, shield soldiers, I said we'd come back to this and here we are. Um, if they're blood punched at full health, meaning that you haven't done any damage to them yet, uh, they will be put into a staggered state. Uh, you can use this to your advantage if you need to uh, refill on your health, get a glory kill. Um, 
it's, you know, a lot easier than, you know, when you're panicking, I would say, and you can't quite hit uh, with your heavy cannon or something, you can just blood punch one of these guys and get some quick health. Um, the lower levels are uh, a little bit dangerous because there are ceilings, and I would I would just say, like, use these for pathing to get to the more advantageous areas. Um, if there's a isolated demon there, you can go down there, you know, if you're just trying to escape and reroute towards your jump pads and portals, they're fine, but it's not a place you want to hang out or try to gain your bearings. There are better spots to do that. So, now that we've gone over that, we're going to watch the first of two um, successful runs here, and I'm just going to commentate over these. I'm not going to uh, break it down until the end. If there's anything that I feel is important, we'll kind of just run it back and play it in slow motion, you know, that kind of thing. Kind of point out why it was good or bad or anything like that, but I will be commentating over uh, these runs and kind of giving you my ideas like my thought process as I was getting through these. So let's get to our first run. Goddamn unreal. All right, so I kind of ad, ad lib these, but okay. this is how it starts. We're gonna start with the Arachnatron on the right, okay, we uh, because armor. we need armor. Uh, we want to try and maintain that, and this uh, demon's just right in front of us. We kind of panic a little bit, um, but it turns out okay because we just blood punch their turrets off, and that's kind of puts us at an advantage against them. My aim is not all that great though, and that's kind of a, a, a problem for both runs really, but it's a lot worse right, than this one. The, uh... oh, bitch, I just so, find another cell. Oh. I am trying my best here to maintain my resources. Um, we could be doing a better job. We're not really letting them dictate how we, uh, how we choose our engagements. Why so, did you jump up there, you son of a bitch? Now we're starting to utilize our... Make a loop. Our loop. Utilizing this high ground up here with the cover. Um, kind of just feeling it out to see what, uh, what we can isolate and take out. And it works out because we get that Hell Knight and a Glory Kill out of it. So now we're in a position. There's just a Prowler left, and it looks like he's behind me, and I kind of missed that. When playing this, I could have turned around and taken him out. But we're just trying to work our way around. But the pain Elemental's in now. And so he's target number one because those Cacodemons are going to be spawning in soon. We don't want to deal with all three. So that works out. There's that uh, soldier glory kill that I was telling you about earlier. That's a really useful uh, tool to use in this. So now I know that there are going to be the Cacodemons. And there they are. You see how they kind of have a hard time with that cover? It's really good for uh, you to be up here when they come in. And now I'm setting up a couple more uh, glory kills because I noticed I was low on health. And now it's just a matter of getting some armor and stuff. Okay, I'm doing fine. Oh, there's another glory kill. Some armor. Now here's the problem. Uh, we have a Baron of Hell in. Um, the ca the carcasses are going to be coming in soon as well. Oh my god, the fucking Hell Knights are here. I don't know why I don't get the Crucible, dude. Like, huh? We're going to kind of just loop around and find a good opportunity to fight that Baron of Hell. And uh, we... S See, we still have uh, some prowlers running around, but we're on the move enough to where they can't really ambush us. Unless they somehow t teleport in front of us, which I don't think happens. Okay, what? Sword making now, hell of a lot easier. You'll, this is a recurring theme between both runs here, is yeah, that the uh, chain gun is a good tool for those because close range pressure demons, uh, because it has a, a good chance to falter them. Uh, get another glory kill. We don't really need it, but hey, the closer we are to full health, the better we're gonna be. Uh, now, I think I, they, I said they I they don't seriously? like being down here, but I come down here often. It's kind of just like a repositioning thing. I'm not really trying to stay there, and it's a good opportunity to get rid of this uh, Baron of Hell. Now we've got the Arachnatrons, the Tyrant, and some carcasses to deal with. And this is what I mean by that area getting congested. Uh, it's not really the best place okay, to be. I, health and armor. I could have been overwhelmed very easily there. And 
now we have a tyrant. Oh, he's here. Uh, he's here. So we're going to use the unmaker strategy with the overdrive, which if you don't know gives you unlimited ammo with it, so it kind of makes it worth using. But the speed boost is kind of hard for me to control, so I end up just kind of clearing out the section before I get overran, and then circling back around to finish off the tyrant. And it's just like that. So after that, nice. all that's left oh is God, uh, God. some Go. fodder and a, Go, a prowler, but I reload checkpoint so I can try again. I was certain I could do better, and I, I really do in the next uh, next attempt here. So while this finishes up, I'm just going to kind of start going over some of these issues that I had with the run. Or some of the things I noticed and that were good and bad, I guess. So let's go ahead and start with that. So I have pretty good movement. I'm looping. I wasn't doing very well with that at the beginning, but I started to acclimate myself to that and kind of adapt to how this map uh, uh, kind of... To, to the way I think the map okay. wants me to work it. Um, the other thing, uh, my resource management could be better. I had low ammo often. Um, my aim could be much better. And that's kind of a, a recurring theme between both. Um, and really the biggest issue is I, while I was trying to have my uh, resources dictate my engagements, I don't think I was doing it enough. And I had some positional mistakes. But all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the second run. And let's see how that one goes. Okay, so for our second run, instead of going right and fighting that Arachnotron right away go to the left and take the portal which gives us puts us right on track with uh, our loop there's another one of those neat uh, glory kills off this sh shield soldier so now we're just gonna loop on this top level and look at that we have an isolated arachnatron so it's easy to eliminate him out of the equation and we're gonna just stick to this uh, upper level as often as possible and use this uh, cover now we're going to run into a little bit of a sticky situation here in which I get very lucky. I'm trying to hit those turrets, but I just can't. And now I'm at 5 health, it's going to go up a little bit, but this is a really precarious situation that I should not have been in in the first place. In fact, if I didn't dodge those projectiles or get that glory kill, I certainly would have died. So now, um, my primary goal now should be to continue filling up my health and to continue filling up my... Um, armor, which I do start working on the health. I take a hit, but I'm at a higher health total than I was before, so it's kind of worth it. We're going to get another one here, though. We did lose a little bit of damage uh, at some point. There was a good example of situational awareness, where I seen that Hell Knight was coming, so instead of running right at him, I decided to just shift to the right a little bit and get out of there. Uh, we just kind of keep getting in these rough situations, which force us to uh, make sure we're staying on top of our uh, resource management. Like right there, we could have died easily if there was another demon that we didn't hit with that. And now we're at 10, so it's kind of precarious, and we get super lucky with that uh, Prowler missing his projectile. So now, I believe we just have, uh, I believe, there's still a Hell Knight and a Prowler, so we're not to the next phase yet. But we do need health because that armor and health total is abysmal. And luckily we do get it off of that uh, glory kill. So now, yep, utilizing our map to give us an advantage, get a, a quick view at the arena. And there's our other Hell Knight. So once he's dead, we'll get the pain elemental. Uh, we're going to work on our armor, which is now its getting closer to the top. We're pretty close to being topped off on that. Jump pad. So I just noticed that my situational awareness right there was just a little rough. I did catch a glimpse of that uh, pain elemental, but I didn't deal with it yet. And it's primarily uh, because I kind of wanted to focus on getting more resources. Um, and then here, I wasn't sure if I hit that first lock on burst, but um, we're not sure if we kill it, and that confirms it with his body falling down there. Uh, a really nice dash to avoid those hits from the Cacodemons. Um, we're going to set up a, a glory kill. Uh, we have much better aim there. I, 
surprised I hit those. Um, usually it happens when I'm not trying, but it happened. Um, so we've got the Baron of Hell to deal with. We're going to start off with a, a lock-on burst, and then switch to the energy shield to finish him off. Uh, excellent. Excellent job there. Now we're in kind of a rough situation. And these carcasses, um, I got unlucky with my blood punch there. It did not destroy the shield. In fact, we didn't even use one. Um, we're doing really well on the glory kills now. Uh, I think we kind of learned our lesson from the last time. And that blood punch was pretty lucky as well, uh, getting both of their turrets knocked off. Uh, I'm kind of panicking here, and that's why I go for this chainsaw. We actually needed the cells, but also we were right by that tyrant, and those uh, those arachnotrons were on us. So now here's the the alternative strat. I wasn't sure if we'd use the ammo with the BFG and the overdrive. Um, it turns out you do, but it doesn't matter because it's just a, a far better strat, and you don't even really need the overdrive. Um, I kind of waste some movement there. But we can come up, and since we use the BFG, we're now free to kind of, uh, you know, take out that tyrant uncontested without fodder coming in and messing things up there. And so from here on out, it's basically just cleanup. There's just, there's just fodder here. And really, the end of this fight is just me preparing for my next engagements post arena. So. I'm looking for, uh, you know, getting some glory kills, getting some extra armor, um, basically just preparing myself for what lies ahead after this. So while this, while I finish up the cleanup here, I'll just kind of go over some of the things that I've seen in this. So first of all, I did have some positional mistakes, especially on that upper level by the stairs. Um, I really should not be playing around there. I should have just looked for a better opportunity to take out those arachnotrons. I am utilizing the map a lot better though, and so that's that's excellent. That's what I want to see, uh, using portals and cover and whatnot. I have a better resource priority, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing this go-around, because the reason why I had to have a better resource priority is because I was hitting low health totals quite often, so it forced me into a position where I had to uh, do... I had to get glory kills and flame belch. Uh, my aim was a little bit better. It could still be better, but it was better than the first run. I had pretty good reactions and iframe usage, especially with that chainsaw by the tyrant. Uh, if you're ever panicking, just press square. It's uh, pretty good. And then I found that the BFG created a much better, um, you know, a much better opportunity to take on that tyrant. So. With that being said, I think the biggest takeaway here is just a, a better focus on your resource pr uh, management and utilizing the gameplay loop to keep those resources up and so that you're not uh, putting yourself in a situation where you could die. Um, there are some things that could be better, and I can admit to that, but the whole point of this is just to give us an idea of what could be done better and prevent, provide a learning situation for all of us when it comes to playing this game on the harder difficulties. But with that being said, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this arena analysis, and I look forward to doing more of these in the future, especially with the DLC out now. So uh, that's what I got for you guys. If you like this video, give it a like. Um, dislike it if you dislike it. Um, leave a comment if there's a a map or arena that you want me to take a look at, I would be happy to do so. This game's excellent. I've had a, a fun time doing stuff like this, and I'd like to do more in the future. So just let me know what you want to see, and I will oblige. So with that being said, I am going to get out of your hair. I hope you enjoyed everything, and we'll see you later. Peace.